Today, I will present how to connect to Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Regions using Equinix Network Edge devices. This solution can be used as a replacement for OCA remote peering connection. This video will follow the network diagram shown on the screen and the primary focus will be creating an Equinix partner fast connect and how to provision and configure the Equinix side. I have prepared all the required data to configure OCA fast connect and Equinix infrastructure. On OCA console, let's choose the Phoenix region. Now, let's go to hamburger menu, networking, fast connect under customer connectivity and create fast connect. Under connection time, select Fast Connect Partner and Equinix Fabric. Provide the name for this connection. Select DRG. Bandwidth. Fill the BGP IP addresses for Equinix and Oracle. After we add the IP addresses, we need to provide the ISN of Equinix site. In this case, I used 65000. After we click, click Create, the Phoenix region fast connect, it's finished. Let's change to the Azure region and follow the same steps as the Phoenix region to create the fast connect. Now that we have finished the OCA site configuration, we can switch to the Equinix portal and start configuring the Equinix side. First, go to the Network Edge tab and click Create Virtual Device. Select the vendor and the device. In my case, I have selected Palo Alto Networks as a vendor and Palo Alto Networks VM series as a device, but you can choose anything from the list. Select deployment type. In my case, I have selected a single device since I will not cover any redundancy aspects of this use case. Select the location where the device is created. In my case, I have chosen Dallas. Also on this page, you need to select the billing account. On the next page, we need to provide the following configuration details for the Palo Alto VM series device. Connectivity details. Licensing details, device resources, software package, software version, device details, interfaces. I have added my email on device status notification. I have chosen uh, term length and optionally you can uh, add the purchase order number. On the next page, we can add additional services based on our needs. Now, I'm reviewing all the details are OK. Confirm that I have reviewed and acknowledged the shared support structure and review the accepted terms and conditions. Once I got the message that the device is created, if I click go to the device, I will see the device's details and status. At first, the status is initializing and after a while, it will move to provisioning. At this point, we can create connections to OCA by clicking create connection. Select Oracle Cloud and choose Create Connection Network Gauge Device under Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Fast Connect. Select the Network Gauge Device we created, choose the region Ashburn and accept the Remote Connection Warning. Add a name and now go to OCA Fast Connect Console and 
copy the OCI ID of the fast connect we created earlier and paste it in here. Choose how the interface is allocated. In my case, I will manually assign an other interface. Select the speed and click next. Review the order and submit the order. Once I get the order submitted confirmed, I will start the second connection to OCA Phoenix region. First, I will go to Connections tab, click Create Connection, and after that, I will repeat the steps what I have done for Ashburn, but only using Phoenix region OCID. Now, the second connection to Phoenix is done. Once I see the confirmation that the order is submitted, I can move on with the rest of the steps. I will go to Virtual Device Inventory under Network Gauge tab. I will click on the Network Gauge device name and I will check that the connections are created by going to the Connection tabs and also under Interfaces tabs. And as you can see, I can see the two connections to OCI Ashburn and OCI Phoenix already created. Now it's time to connect to the Edge device. Go to Tools and open a console connection. This console connection is needed one time to change the uh, initial Econix device uh, password. The initial password can be found under details tab on the device page. Log in to the device with the initial password. Once you are logged in, to change the initial password, you need the, to do the following. Enter configuration mode. Type in the command set mgt config users admin password. Type in the desired password. Confirm the desired password. And do a commit. Once the commit is done, we can now go and connect to the virtual device using the GUI. For that, go to the details page and copy the FQDN. With that FQDN, open a new browser image and do an HTTPS to the uh, FQDN. Accept the security warning, which is given because we don't have a valid certificate. And now it's time to connect with the username and the password we have created. Once we are logged in to the Palo Alto, please read through and close the welcome messages and all other messages. Now, the first thing we need to do is to activate the advanced routing. Go to device tab, click on the gear icon under general settings, check the advanced routing options and click OK. Accept all the warning messages it's creating now and click OK on everything. And click yes on the last advanced routing warning image. After this, we need to, to do a commit from the top right corner and click commit. Once the configuration is committed, we can close the window. Now we need to reboot the firewall by going to the device tab, operations, and click reboot device. 
confirm device reboot by clicking yes. Once the device is rebooted, log on again. Under the network tab, we should see logical routing and routing profiles under routing. Now, it's time to configure the interfaces. First, I will configure the interface Ethernet 1.2, which is the OCA Ashburn Fast Connect. Provide a comment. Created a new security zone for OCI. Under IPv4 tab, I have entered the IP address, in this case 172.16.01.30. Optionally, you can create a management profile under Advanced tab. And now, this interface is complete. In the same way, we configure the Phoenix interface, interface 1-3. Now, both interfaces are configured and should look like this. At this point, I will create some prefix list filters by going to filters under networking, routing profiles, and click on add filters under prefix list. Fill in the name and because I'm doing first for the Ashburn, I will add Ashburn VCN CIDR block. Next, I will create a prefix lister for the Phoenix region also. At this point, I will have two prefix lists, one for each region. Next, I will create some BGP root map filters. I will create four uh, root map filters, two for in and two for out for each region. I will create a name, in this case is Ashburn in bot of uh, filter root map. I will create an entry and in this case I will do a permit and on the match tab I will select the Ashburn cider block and now I will select OK and the filter uh, root map for Ashburn inbound is created now I will create Ashburn outbound The configuration for Ashburn inbound list it's almost as the same as the outbound. The only difference it's on the match. The prefix list will choose its phoenix. Next, we'll configure the phoenix inbound and outbound root fill root maps. And at the end, we'll have four root map filters for the BGP. Now it's time to create the BGP filters. First, we'll create and activate an address family profile for BGP. And now we'll create two BGP filtering profiles, one for Ashburn and one for Phoenix. Give it a name. In this case, I will use this filter for Ashburn. And I will select Ashburn inbound and outbound root maps. After this is done, I will create the Phoenix filtering profile. At the end, we'll have two filtering profiles, one for Ashburn and one for Phoenix. Optionally, you can create BGP authentication profiles and BGP timers profiles. Now, it's time to configure the BGP and go under logical routers. On the default router, 
and under BGP. Select Enable Other Router ID. And the local IS. Move to Peering Group tab. It create a peering. Give it a name. Select an IPv4 address family and the IPv4 filtering profile and add a peer. Give it a name. Enter the PRIS, in this case OCI IS number. And now complete the fields under addressing. We'll uh, select not to inherit, add an IPv4 address family and an IPv4 filtering profile. We'll select the local address of the interface. and add the PRIP address. And with this, the Ashburn peer group is done. Now we should create a Phoenix peer group, the, the same we have created the Ashburn peer group. To finalize PDGP configuration, go to network and add the two region cider blocks for Ashburn and Phoenix. Now this configuration is complete and we can commit the changes to be saved. Now the commit is successful and we can close this window. Now it's time to verify if the BGP is up and if we are seeing anything. As you can see, both BGP are established. Now let's move to OCA console and verify if BGP is up also here. As you can see, both regions, Phoenix and Ashburn, the BGP status, it's up. Now, to verify if the routes are advertised, we shall go to the DRG and check the routing table of the VCN. As you can see, I'm seeing the routes from the other end over the DRG. Since I'm seeing the prefixes advertised correctly and the BGP up, now it's time to move to the OCI console and do some test of connectivity. As you can see, ping tests are working just fine now. Also to see the path, I will start some trace path to check the required path. With this, we are concluding our demo. Thank you for watching.